In fact, uh, Biafra was the first place that I discovered on the African map. And from early 68 to 70, I was listening to every bulletin in English and in French, taking notes on what was happening, trying to find out exactly the, you know, push and return and push and return and uh, learning names that I didn't know, like Owefi, Onisha, Umwahia, and so on, until I saw it for real, you know, after I met my husband and uh, I went to uh, Iboland in 1972. And I remember one of the first shocks I had, apart from discovering the burnt down and destroyed UNM, was to see the vehicles carbonized, you know, in Abagana. And, yeah, sorry my accent is bad. You know, and I will never forget all these things. But people were very, very happy, I remember that. And probably happier than what they are now, sometimes. And so the war meant a lot to me. And I made it my life mission, academically, to tell about Nigeria, and especially Igbo land, to the outside world. So I did it in French for a long time. Then I came here, and people were saying, well, well, you have to write in English. So I started doing that. And the day I met uh, Father Izani, I found this war. He was really my brother, because he had exactly the same idea. You know. And I was very, very happy that I could write the foreword to uh, In Biafra, Africa Died. And as I said there, this fearless and timely piece of research that he wrote adds to the growing number of scholarly publications on what has been termed the Nigerian Civil War, with the aim of offering an informed opinion on the conflict which tore the Federation apart from nearly three years. In 14 well-structured chapters that you must read, and numerous appendices revealing a solid knowledge of the subject, he, he confronts, <coughs> he does not hesitate to dig up uncomfortable truths and confront controversial issues too often swept under the carpet, questioning long accepted views on the war. Father Izanis takes stock, stock of the most frequently asked questions on Nigerian history and politics. He attempts to offer answers as a seasoned educator. And in order to do that, he revisits widespread reading of the events leading to the conflict and draws lessons from the war experience and its aftermath, thus contributing to a deeper understanding of the reasons for the cracks that now threaten Nigeria's future. Exploring issues relating to history, regional identities, national and international politics, and demolishes preconceived ideas and stereotypes. The author suggests reasons why, unquote, Nigeria is one of the few richest countries in the world in terms of its enormous human and material resources, and paradoxically also belongs to the class of the world's poorest countries. For Father Zani, the only explanation for the long-term decline and current situation of the country is that, unquote, one unmistakable lesson to be learned from the Nigeria Biafra War is that Nigerian leaders have not hitherto learned any lesson from it, while proving once more that the memory of those three years still haunts the country, turns an African crippled giant. This remarkable book is also a challenge to Africans, calling for a renaissance of the continent. I want to add to this that we need, you know, uh, somebody said that we should remember. And it's also what Adichie said, we must remember, we must not forget. Because it's easy for people to sweep these things on the, car the carpet because they say, well, Biafra is a defunct country. And so it's indecent to talk about it. And we find out that lots of books write you know, are being published on the subject. Why is it that is still the case? And it will continue until everything has been told. Look, at, you can compare it with the Second World War in, in uh, you know, and its aftermath, like in France, where I come from. You know, people continue writing. People need to tell. And there is no shame, because many people don't want to hear. They say it's not convenient. 
It's not politically correct. Don't say this and don't say that. You must say. You must write. Everybody that has the, the, the possibility should do. Somebody I met uh, in 2010 in Washington, D.C., published a little book full of, with a CD that he published himself, you know, so it's not remarkable musically, but he copied songs from the Biafran War in Igbo and other languages. And these are very important things that have been added to the treasure. So the truth must continue being told. And also, like I said before when I met you once, people continue talking in your language, learning the language, because the language and the culture go together. Thank you.